All right, so I'm Brian Spillingon. I'm a hobbyist um, uh, out of uh, Rhode Island. Uh, so I don't work in uh, GIS or mapping or anything like that. So this is sort of my uh, personal labor of love to build this uh, community map style for, uh, for our national audience. So I'd like to start with the description of what a, a regional style is. So if you head over to uh, openstreetmap.org, uh, the style you see there, the so-called standard tile label, uh, layer, uh, AKA OpenStreetMap Carto, uh, sort of a you know, globally relevant style, but there are also uh, national specific styles, like I've got the French and the German styles pictured here on the slide. Uh, the German style is kind of interesting, so there's those uh, sort of blue hexagons, uh, which are used for the German Bundes Autobahn. And uh, so those are the uh, shield that you would see in Germany on their uh, sort of first class motorways. And so you've got uh, sort of our uh, interstate highway route numbers kind of written on them, right? And so that's, you know, if a, if a German uh, tourist were in America and they saw that, they would understand that uh, we're showing a highway there. So the other uh, kind of useful purpose uh, for a regional style is mapper feedback. So when a mapper sees uh, what we're drawing on the map and they see that something doesn't look right or something's missing that they think should be there, uh, so that gives feedback to mappers to uh, you know, put certain features, uh, certain things in the map. And so the features that we choose to render or to not render or emphasize or de-emphasize uh, will help mappers sort of you know, put things in the map that we think are you know, useful for, uh, for an American style. And <clears throat> And so I cut up here a couple of examples of probably the two most prominent uh, paper maps uh, manufacturers in the United States, so Rand McNally and AAA. So these are probably familiar to uh, anyone that's looked at a paper map here. And I'm going to point out some of the features that are, are pretty common in American style maps. And so the first, of course, is the highway shields. And you see you've got our blue and red interstates. Uh, we've got the uh, U.S. highway routes with their kind of funny pointed signs and then the, the sort of circular and rounded ones uh, are, are your state highways. Um, so I want to point out here in the RAND map, there's, uh, there's a U.S. 20 ALT, right, the ALT, and those are little, little banners that you'll see on uh, special routes of the U.S. highway system. So there's all sorts of little special cases like that. Um, route concurrencies are a big thing in the U.S. that are not quite as common overseas. And so uh, in this case, you've got the Ohio Turnpike that, that kind of runs through the map here, and that's the confluence of Interstates 80 and 90. Uh, on the AAA side, you'll see it as you know, sort of two shields next to each other. Uh, Rand chose to stack them in a vertical configuration, so that's just hand-drawn cartography to make the pieces fit in the right amount of space. Uh, so we've got expressways drawn in here. And so on the, on the Rand map, you see them as sort of yellow, cased in red, and uh, on the AAA map, it's uh, a little bit harder to see, but basically they're, uh, they're white cased in black. And so expressways are not quite freeways, um, so they're roads that are high quality, high speed, uh, but don't quite meet you know, your sort of interstate uh, type standards. <clears throat> uh, toll roads are another key feature. So there's no toll road coloring on uh, the standard tile layer, but we do expect to see them on American tile maps. Okay, so you notice uh, for lesser types of roads, uh, they're typically drawn in a stroked line style with no casing. And so that's, that's pretty common, and that's different from the standard tile layer, which is generally cased uh, at, uh, at all the higher zooms. And so I also want to point out another arrow I just popped up there. Uh, the labels for roads are normally drawn to the side. Uh, of roads on our maps uh, and not typically sort of jammed into the middle like you see on the, on the standard tire layer. So collectively, these are the sorts of features that we're looking at as you know, American style and we're trying to bake into, uh, into our style. Now, this is a, there's one other thing that is not typical of American maps, it's typical of all maps in that you see the road network is interconnected in a nice sort of meaningful way. Here is the standard tile layer uh, rendering of Oklahoma from uh, not too long ago. Uh, and you see there's lots of little dangling ends, there's gaps, there's little islands of, uh, of roads. So the red in this view is motorway, and the orange is the next class trunk. So the reason the map looks this way is because early on uh, in our history, it was uh, standard to render roads, or to rather to tag roads with expressway tile, tile construction 
uh, with uh, trunk tagging, and then when when that sort of high speed road would enter a town, and then the the lanes would narrow, and the speeds would go down, and like stop signs and that kind of thing would show up. Uh, you know, the uh, the highway tag would flip over to, to primary, and so you get these gaps at lower zooms that don't show primary and lower uh, lower levels. And so the problem with with that was, you know, we didn't have a tag that could express the fact that a road is expressway, and so we were sort of overloading this road class uh, tag to do that. And so um, a tag expressway equals yes uh, became in vogue at some point uh, to indicate a road is expressway independent of its overall uh, sort of uh, connectivity value uh, in the road network. And so uh, we're, we're proud that we're rendering that tag. We believe we're the first open source dial to render. Uh, this particular tag, and so I've got a little screenshot from uh, Vermont, that uh, the little vertical section that's kind of double cased in uh, red. So that's that's a section of Trunk Highway that's uh, also an expressway, and so we have that differentiated renderer to encourage mappers to add expressway tagging uh, where road is expressway. Uh, so I want to flip the conversation a little bit to Highway Shields, which is probably the most recognizable aspect uh, of our maps. Uh, there is so many strange shields out there. Um, and as I've, as I've gone through this project, I've, <laughs> I've even surprised myself uh, as to what's out there. I want to share some uh, views of highway shields from uh, foreign audiences, which are pretty interesting. And so this is translated from German. And so uh, this was in the Germany forum. The shields have always been a big deal for the Americans, for whom it is completely normal that three highways and two state roads and another special truck route share a road section and the users expect all six shields to appear nicely next to each other on the map. Uh, we agree. Okay. <laughs> right, they should. And so, uh, about eight years ago, uh, someone opened a uh, ticket on the Carto uh, GitHub saying, hey, we should have shields on the standard tire label, uh, on the standard uh, uh, renderer, right? Because North American users expect to see them there. Uh, so, of course, that's still open eight years later, uh, but some of the uh, fun comments from that thread include, it is simply quite ugly. Uh, how many symbols are for the U.S.? Dozens? Hundreds? Are you proposing having symbols for different states and even counties within states in the U.S.? Uh, so absolutely yes, uh, Ohio is probably the first defender on that. And then uh, lastly, uh, so this is from an American now, I don't understand the people who are suggesting that shields are optional. They aren't optional. They are required. They're how you tell the difference between I-787, New York 787, and County Road 787. And so um, the bottom line here is uh, that shields are sort of an American cultural phenomenon, and uh, they haven't made their appearance in most open source maps uh, simply because we as an American community haven't done it yet, and uh, that's, that's what we're working to break through. Uh, so there's a lot of weird uh, routes out there. Um, I probably found a half a dozen more since I put the slide together. And uh, there are a lot of challenges related to uh, how we draw them, should we draw them, how do we tag them, should we tag them. And so all those conversations uh, continue and are ongoing, and we hope to help drive it. <clears throat> okay, I want to talk a little bit about concurrency cartography. So of course, a concurrency is when you have two or more routes. Uh, sharing the same stretch of roadway. Uh, so we would like to draw them linearly along the path of the roadway and uh, ordered uh, such that the most important shields go first. And so that means your interstates come first, then your US routes, then your state routes, and, and so forth. And so that's what I've shown here. And then within uh, sort of uh, each route network, they're uh, ordered uh, numerically. Uh, and we're supporting up to a six-way concurrency. So this stretches from the Indianapolis uh, sort of loop highway. Uh, I think there's actually like eight concurrencies on this stretch, but uh, that's, that's insane. OK, so I want to talk about how uh, we've built this. And so first, I need to talk about the tagging. And so we start with route relation. So we're a route relation renderer. Uh, we completely ignore any tagging on member ways. And so our route relation would have a network and a ref. And so the network would indicate the route network that uh, the way is a part of. And so that's uh, structured in such a way that there's a national prefix and then followed by uh, a network indicator. And so US colon I equals uh, interstates. Um, so I, so we would say like I-10, I-15. So the I is, is how we extract that. So US colon I is, is used on all US interstates. And then there's other codes for uh, other types of roads in the US that start with US colon. And then ref just get the route number. And that's different from uh, way member tagging, which would have like just I-95 in this example. 
Uh, so the network tag uh, indicates which shield you're drawing, right? So if you're US colon I, then the, you get the you know blue and red interstate shield, and then the uh, ref tag uh, will you know will show you what you're drawing on top of it. And so uh, what has to happen is, and by the way, we're a vector uh, tile renderer, so that network and ref tag has to get glommed together into some type of attribute that shows up uh, in the tile, and it would show up something like this: route underscore one equals USI ninety five, and then you could have Route two, route three, route four, as many as you need uh, to create the concurrency. And so uh, we start with open map tiles, which is the uh, schema that we're using as the basis for the American map style. Uh, so over the last year, we've gotten about 50 uh, pull requests added uh, to that schema in order to support the features that we care about. And then, uh, so open map tiles uh, produces a vector tile format. It's basically uh, Google protocol buffs that, uh, that have all your vector map data that's fed into a library called Map Libra, uh, which is augmented with the our style, uh, which is the piece that we provide. And so uh, what happens is we say, okay, we got uh, US uh, I equals 95. Uh, draw the shield for it. Okay, now we're not going to obviously store in our sprite sheet every single possible shield for every single possible route number. We've got to deconstruct it. And so we get USI 95 and we say, oh, don't know what that is. And so there's a hook that says, hey, there's a missing image. What do I do? Uh, that leads into a piece of JavaScript code that says, okay, USI, I know what that is. Uh, give me that blank shield out of the sprite sheet. And I take my presidential white Sharpie marker, scribble 95 on top of it. And now we've got our 95 shield, and uh, subsequent calls for that shield will return that cached graphic. And then that's the map that gets displayed to the user. OK, so now you're probably saying, OK, that's great, but now you've got to have a planet uh, vector tile server. Uh, that's kind of big. How do we do it? Well, there have been some uh, new technology in the last couple of months, a uh, product called uh, Planet Tiler Open Source is able to produce a planet vector tile server uh, in about a couple of hours on a high-end compute node. Uh, if you're doing cloud compute uh, like with AWS, that'll cost you about a buck to, uh, to compute that. Uh, produces a file that's 100 gigs. You could store that for about five bucks a month, and you could serve it for about five bucks a month. Uh, it's not going to be high-powered, but it'll, uh, it'll get you going as a starting point. And so this is really achievable, I think, pretty much uh, for anybody. Uh, and so with this scheme, you could imagine how we could have uh, daily or even multiple times uh, a day updates uh, if you want to pay for you know, repeated uh, computes. So I'd like to uh, end with my call for action. Uh, so this is a community collaborative project. Uh, this is, uh, so this is my baby, I'm starting it, but uh, I want this to be the community baby. I'm, I'm proud of all the people that we have uh, contributing to this, uh, adding styles, uh, adding shields and, and rendering features uh, you know, almost on a daily basis. Uh, we'd like to get this up uh, on OpenStreetMap US as a centerpiece and focal point uh, for you know, cartography in our community. Uh, I've got a GitHub uh, with the aforementioned uh, global um, a global rendered uh, uh, tile server up there. Uh, we've got a flat channel American map style that's uh, quite popular. And uh, I want to note that we are a uh, CC0 licensed, or rather non-licensed uh, project. Right? And so we're dedicating this to the public domain. Uh, it is our goal that American style cartography proliferate into open source maps as much as possible. So please, copy our work, our techniques, our shield graphics. Uh, it's all there for you to use. And with that, uh, we'll take any questions.